It's shameful. They should do better. The please the resuming resuming debate. Honourable member for uh, Stevenston Richmond East. Madam Speaker, first, uh, I'd like to express my sincere gratitude to my constituents in Stevenston Richmond East, British Columbia, for having placed their trust in me by electing me as their representative in Parliament. I also want to thank my colleague at Dufferin Caledon for uh, sharing the time with me. I'm honored to serve uh, my constituents in this parliament here. I'm here today to debate Bill C-6, an act to implement a change in the oath of citizenship in response to recommendation 94 of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. It is an amendment to the Citizen Citizenship Act to include the promise to respect the treaty rights of First Nation, Inuit, and Métis peoples. I have found that there is no logic in placing support behind this bill when it is so glaringly exclusionary of the many Métis, Inuit, and BC First Nations who are not under treaty rights. For they don't, they don't have, they do not have effective treaties in their respective areas. What purpose would the proposed changes serve for these individuals? Our nation is a nation of immigrants that stand on the tradition, traditional territories of and shoulder to shoulder with First Nations, Inuit, and Métis peoples. Canada is one of the only few countries in the world where indigenous rights and treaty rights are entrenched in our constitution. I do believe educating Canadians about these rights is an important part of the path to reconciliation. However, this education is already in effect. New citizens, having completed their residence, residency requirements and having studied the Handbook of History, Responsibility and Obligations, are expected to be aware, be aware of the rights entrenched within the Constitution. This gives them at least a general view of the spectrum of resolved and unresolved treaty rights in different parts of the country. In doing so, they develop a respect for what is among Canada's existing body of laws and can appreciate the need to fulfill the remaining unfulfilled treaty obligations within the process of reconciliation. Apparently, our Liberal government believes Canadians to be so unsophisticated that they would find this task accomplished just by merely adding the 19 words in the Oath of Citizenship. Over 30 years ago, I came to Canada as an immigrant. I have taken the oath of citizenship to our great country. Other members in this house have done the same. I will now read this oath, which has stood unchanged since 1977. I swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, Queen of Canada, her heirs and successors, that I will faithfully observe the laws of Canada and fulfill my duties as a Canadian citizen. The oath is simple. It represents the final step of the journey from initial entry to planting roots and eventually becoming a family member, a Canadian family member, a citizen. The oath of citizenship need not be and should not be complicated nor thorough examination of the rights and obligation of what it is to be a Canadian. It is merely an affirmation of loyalty to the Queen of Canada, representing the head of state of our constitutional monarchy, and an, an affirmation to obey our laws and obligations as a Canadian. Let me reiterate, the existing oath of citizenship already includes the promise of citizens to faithfully observe the laws of Canada. These laws include the Constitution, and the Constitution recognizes and affirms the Aboriginal and treaty rights of First Nations, Inuit, and Métis peoples. To accept the proposed legislation is therefore unnecessarily redundant. So I ask again, what is the purpose does this bill serve? As I have mentioned, along the way of becoming a citizen, a new immigrant must read materials relating to the origins of Canada, including Canadian Indigenous peoples. Madam Speaker, I believe can, can Canada's Indigenous would be better served by emphasizing Recommendation 93 and not 94 of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission's call to action by strengthening this education. 
I will now read out Recommendation 93 of the TRC report. We call upon the federal government in collaboration with the national Aboriginal organizations to revise the information kit for newcomers to Canada and its citizenship tests to reflect a more inclusive history of the diverse Aboriginal peoples of Canada, including information about the treaties and the history of residential schools. My alternative to Bill C-6 is just this. Implementing Recommendation 93 would go further to educating new Canadians about our history with First Nations and the obligations the Crown has to them. Such content can also discuss Part 2 of the Charter of Rights and Freedoms, Section 33, uh, 35, pardon me, which states that the existing Aboriginal and treaty rights of the Aboriginal peoples of Canada are hereby recognized and affirmed. It is because of the lack of forethought by the Liberal government that my initial reaction to this legislation was the same as when the government introduced it shortly before the election as Bill C-99, a mere three weeks before the Parliament was ending. That reaction was that this is yet another virtual signal by the Liberal government to talk big but not deliver. The bill is a half-hearted effort by the Liberals to distract from something real. The Prime Minister had recently fumbled a crisis of his own, making, uh, of his own making, and is desperate to take attention away from its own failings when it comes to Canada's Indigenous. Instead of empowering in Indigenous communities to act in their economic interests with Canada's va vast natural resources, he waited until it was too late to respond effectively siding with those who would keep our First Nations improvised to suit their own agenda. Instead of getting on with the program and allowing Coastal Gas Link pipeline to proceed with construction, a pipeline, I would add, that has signed agreements with all the elected band councils along the planned route, and our Prime Minister instead spent significant time actively promoting the obstruction, like Albertans. Our First Nation people want to work. They want to do what is best for their generations and their future generation. And they have both had and they both have their opportunities denied under this Prime Minister. Instead of creating jobs, jobs have been lost. Because of indecisiveness on the, black, uh, the blockades, Canada has lost the opportunity and the economic advantages provided by the Tech Frontier oil sand mine. This is not good for our country. And, or those in the indigenous commu communities who actively want to see construction or on resource projects proceed, nor it is it is good for Canada. Madam Speaker, Canada has a long and complicated relationship with its indigenous people, and I readily agree that further steps are necessary to strengthen our relationship. Changing the oath of citizenship does not accomplish this task. The leadership of this government had promised so many more sunny ways than it has delivered in any substantial form. These Canadians deserve better than another empty promise made by the politicians wishing to cater sympathetic favour and reduce proud citizens of this nation to tokens cynically used to curry political favour. Bill C-6. It's another example of more liberal false and, dare I say, empty compassion. Something I believe Canadians are getting very tired of. As a Conservative Member of Parliament, I stand for the improvement of Canada. My party stands for the improvement of Canada. We, re we represent the many Canadians who want better than a government that consistently failed in its mandate by changing the rules and not providing urgent transparent uh, actions to address the concerns of Canadians. Simply put, this Liberal government does not act in the interest of making life for Canadians better. It merely pretends to do so. These last few weeks, the Prime Minister has been absent and indecisive as Canada has faced a uni unity crisis in dealing with the blockades. No matter the gravity of this issue facing Canada or the concern of the Indigenous inhabitants, the, the, the House has been served an appealing word salad in the, in the response. Similarly, this bill is all but response devoid of any substance. What I would like to know is, when will the Liberal government begin to take action to help Canadian Indigenous people beyond their typical tokenism and pondering? Thank you. Madam. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
questions and comments? The Honourable Member for Wells. Thank you for letting me continue on this debate. Uh, through you, the member across the way read the 93rd call to action, but didn't read the 94th call to action, although he did refer to it. The 94th call to action is when, what, in fact, we are debating today of changing the citizenship oath to recognize Indigenous peoples as part of our country, and that newcomers coming to Canada would know the importance of Indigenous peoples to the foundation of Can Can <clears throat> excuse me, the foundation of Canada, and therefore, 94 is what we're debating today. And as we look at all of these, my question to the member across the way is, should we eliminate number 94? Should we just focus on 93 and just call it a day at that? Stevenson, Rich Richmond East. Thank you, Madam Speaker. My colleague, uh, who spoke uh, prior to me uh, from uh, Duffin Callan and had already mentioned, it is a matter of priority, Madam, Madam Speaker. Uh, when we talk about what we can do for our First Nations Indigenous uh, peoples, uh, there are so many that we can do. But instead, this, this Liberal uh, government actually picked on something that actually just have virtual signaling, but nothing actually substantial for our Indigenous people. Educating the newcomers, having them recognize and understand indig Indigenous histories in our country would be far more uh, beneficial to everybody to this country. And that's why I suggested uh, recommendation 93 instead of 94 should be actually implemented. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Questions and comments? Questions and comments? Cowichan, Malahat, Langford. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And, you know, I, I think uh, my colleague uh, touched on some important aspects in his speech. Um, a lot of the issues dealt with in the calls to action uh, cannot, in fact, be solved by legislation. They, they re will require sustained government policy, adequate funding, and so on. Uh, but, but I think the previous Liberal Speaker had a point. You know, this, this is a, a simple bill. It's, call, it's dealing specifically with call to action number 94. And, you know, these calls to action were, were not just written on the back of a napkin. They are the result of a very long and sustained process. And so I'd just like to ask my colleague, I mean, is it his view that call to action number 94 should just be disregarded entirely, given the fact that it was based on so much heart-wrenching testimony and it is been conclusively recommended by the TRC as getting us on a path towards reconciliation. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Honourable Member for uh, Stevenson, Richmond East. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and I thank, you my, thank my uh, esteemed colleague for bringing that question up. Again, I would like to point out that this is actually a matter of prioritization. We have limited time in this House. We have limited uh, energy in this House. And rather than doing something that does not serve uh, our Indigenous people any substantial improvement, that's why we were, uh, I was actually recommending that we looked at uh, the Recommendation 93 instead. Madam Speaker, if you actually uh, allow me to actually highlight what the previous Conservative governments have done in, in uh, many in social unjust, and we will realize that we picked on the right, we picked on the most important, albeit more difficult, challenges. In the South African, uh, the, four, uh, the members across actually brought up South Africans. Uh, it was under the Prime Minister uh, Brian Moroni's uh, leadership that South Africans were actually brought to our, our modern history. It is Brian Moroni also that the Japanese Canadian internment was being able to settle. It was under uh, Prime Minister Stephen Harper that the Chinese head tax uh, uh, injustice was actually righted. It was under uh, Prime Minister Stephen Harper that actually recognized in this house that the resident school was a historical wrong in our country. Madam Speaker, we need to spend our energy and our focus in matters that would actually make the Aboriginal people, the, the ind Indigenous people's life better, and not just tokenism. Thank you. Some comments. The Honourable Member for Fredericton. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker, and I, I thank the Honourable colleagues um, across the way for your, your very passionate speech today as well. Um, I just feel like we're missing the mark a little bit. I, we're missing the idea about sovereignty and self-determination and what we're really here discussing is you know, advancing Indigenous people's rights in this country. I ask you, I've heard many times in your statement the words, our Indigenous communities, our Indigenous communities. We do not own these communities. They are sovereign in their own right. And I ask the member, do you think it's a bit pandering itself, a bit token um, and a bit uh, patronizing to use that kind of terminology? Thank you. Brief answer from the member for Stevenson, Richmond East. 
Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, no, I don't think this is pondering. When I say the word our, it's my country, and we consider everybody in this country our people, and that's what I meant. Thank you. Resuming debate, uh, the Honourable Parliamentary Secretary.